If you remember back to my original gallium video, you will remember that I didn't have any pure gallium in it. All I had was an alloy of gallium, indium, and tin called galinstin. Um, a, another YouTuber um, who was very into chemistry, Ferrari Boy Chem Boy 458, I think I got that right, um, very generously offered to give me some gallium and I accepted. And um, so here in this video, I'm actually going to be able to do some experiments with gallium itself. Before we get to the experiments, I'm going to talk a little bit about gallium first. Uh, gallium is actually, technically speaking, on the periodic table, not a liquid element, but it melts at only 85 degrees, only about 85 degrees Fahrenheit, or 29 degrees Celsius. So, um, if you melt it first, um, it can act quite a bit like mercury, which is very cool because it is completely non-toxic, unlike mercury. Um, having never played with mercury, I don't really have nostalgia for the days when mercury wasn't known to be toxic, but um, I've seen people uh, really, really kind of get a spark in their eye when they see liquid gallium because it's so much like mercury. There are, the experiments I'm going to do with gallium actually are experiments you can do with mercury as well, but are much safer to do with gallium. Um, so in addition, so um, in addition just to being a very cool element, um, gallium is also used in the alloy gallinstin, um, and that's the alloy of gallium, indium, and tin. Now, unlike gallium, which melts at 85 degrees Fahrenheit, gallinstin melts at approximately minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit. So it'll, it stays, it is liquid throughout the entire room temperature range. Because of this, it is now used in thermometers. If you ever get a thermometer that looks like it's a mercury thermometer nowadays, it's most likely a Galinston thermometer. Gallium is also used as a semiconductor, um, and processors that are made with gallium actually can go about 100, to, uh, 100 and more times faster than the equivalent uh, processors made with silicon. Um, another use for gallium is in LEDs. So if you're uh, looking, seeing this video through a computer monitor, which is probably how you're seeing this video, um, most likely the LEDs in the computer monitor have some form of a gallium compound, maybe uh, gallium arsenide or gallium indium arsenide or gallium nitride or any combination of those. So thank gallium. Now onto the experiments. Here's a piece of aluminum. As you can see, it bends, but it's very hard to bend it. Here is some gallium that's in a test tube that's in warm water being melted. There's a little bead of molten gallium. Let's see what gallium can do to that piece of aluminum. More shots of gallium being melted. You can see a little puddle at the bottom of the test tube. And there you go. It's almost all being melted. There, I've put gallium on a scratched piece of the aluminum. Here I am rolling it around trying to get it to go right on top of the aluminum. What's going to happen is when I leave it to sit for a while, the gallium is actually going to alloy itself with the aluminum. The alloy it makes is actually going to be much, much weaker than the aluminum itself. Here I'm using a little wire to scratch up the aluminum so that it will diffuse better. Let's see how weak the aluminum gets in half an hour. There we go. Could break it in half with my bare hands. And now I'm just chipping off little bits. Now for the gallium beating heart experiment. You'll notice that there's a little bead of gallium, and when I touch it with this wire, which is made of iron, the gallium bead flattens out. When I let go, it pops back up again. The reason this is going on is because I've got the bead of gallium and the wire submerged in a bath of sulfuric acid. When, I'm, when the iron wire is not touching the gallium, then the gallium will react with the sulfuric acid to form gallium sulfate. The gallium sulfate layer has a higher surface tension, and therefore the gallium gets pulled up into a tighter ball. When I touch, when the, the iron wire is constantly reacting with the sulfuric acid, and when I touch the iron wire to the gallium, instead of giving up an electron to, the hy to hydrogen, in 
the acid um, and therefore making hydrogen gas, it gives it to the gallium sulfate and therefore the, because uh, gallium's electronegativity is higher than its, the sulfate goes to the iron and you get gallium metal again. The gallium metal has a lower surface tension and so the ball flattens out again. There you go. Gallium beating heart.